Seven career at bats against Felix Pena. Five hits. That's a 185 average. Maybe Felix Pena is a starter you want to use today. Looking at this history between he and the Mariner bats. Now we move on to L.A. And we got two lefties heading in different directions, really. Uh, Vargas pitching tonight for the visiting Mets. He's 1-2 and two with a 5.22 ERA. He will face off against Hajin Ryu at 7-1, and 1.65 ERA. The Mets against Ryu. Ligaris is 2-for-7 on his career. Carlos Gomez, 1-for-3. Todd Frazier, 1-for-5. Excuse me, 1-for-11. And Michael Conforto, 1-for-6. The Mets don't hit Ryu very well. As a team in their career, 39 at-bats for active players, 7 hits, a 179 average. Now, Keep your eye on Pete Alonso. Never faced Ryu in his career. Alonso hit two home runs last night, and if he's going to hit, you know, it used to be Dodger Stadium, and, and Lenny said this this morning, was not a home run hitting park. But doggone, I, th- I guess this year every park is a home run hitting park, right? Uh, I'm really going to keep my eye on the Alonso Ryu matchup. I think Ra- Alonso could cause some damage for the Mets tonight. We'll see how that goes. For the Dodgers against Jason Vargas, well, not as bad as you'd think. But I'm only looking at some limited samples here. David Freeze, though, the, the bat to watch, other than the obvious. David Freeze is 8 for 14 with three home runs in his career against Jason Vargas. So if you're playing in daily leagues, certainly David Freeze is a player, I think, that you want to take a look at and possibly add to your lineup tonight. Speaking of Pete Alonzo, let's move along. And that's our look, first of all, at batting averages against pitchers pitching tonight in the major leagues and this afternoon. Pete Alonzo. You know, last night he went three for four. He had a pair of two-run homers in the loss at Dodger Stadium. Those home runs, guys, are significant because of the fact of who they were hit off of, okay? Now, he wasn't facing chump change last night in Dodger Stadium was not. Uh, he was facing a pretty good hit, pitcher in Walker Bueller on both of these at-bats. And Pete Rockets went to deep left field toward the wall. It's out of here. Second of the night for Pete Alonso. Thunder Pete with a pair of 2-1 homers and the Mets go back in front 5-3. to three. Number 19 for Pete Alonso. So I got to play a little sound effect here because of what the announcer called him. They called him Thunder Pete. Thunder Pete. So when you hear Thunder Pete, you got to hear thunder, right? So Pete Alonzo, three for four, a pair of two-run homers off of Walker Bueller. Yeah, a hard-throwing righty. I'm impressed, Pete Alonzo. Really. You know, now look at his average, 264. That's about where I think Alonzo should be. 34 runs scored. 19 home runs. And as Lenny said this morning, that puts him on pace with Mark McGuire for that rookie record. 43 RBIs already. What kind of pace is that? 130? Wow. Wow. So over his last, and I I love looking at these stats against the Dodgers because the Dodger pitching is a premier pitching staff, right? Through the first three games of this four-game set, Alonzo has been at bat officially, 13 times, okay? In those 13 at-bats, he has recorded six hits, okay? If you're a mathematician kind of guy, that is a batting average of 462, okay? He's at two homers, five RBIs, great time for Alonzo to rise up, great series so far against the Dodgers, Bryce Harper, we talked about earlier. Bryce Harper in the last two games against the Cardinals is 5 for 8 with a home run and 6 RBIs. Yeah, Bryce Harper. Way to go, Bryce. Back time, huh? Yeah. They went 11 to 4. He left the game in the fifth inning. No injury. The Phillies were leading 11 to 1. So they took him out. More than enough. He had fouled a ball off his foot in the prior inning, but there was no injury of report, no day-to-day status listed. 
He had been hitting 5 for 28, that's 179, with 11 strikeouts over the last seven games prior to the series with St. Louis. Okay, but he seems to have found his stroke against the Cardinals with the four extra base hits and six RBIs in these two games against the Redbirds. We'll see if it continues. You know, Harper is a streaky player, and if he gets on a hot streak, what a guy to have in fantasy season long right now. He's at 243 batting average, 33 runs scored, only 10 home runs. But he does have 40 RBIs and two stolen bases. Now, it's time to talk about the new Murderers Road. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the 27 Yankees. I'm talking about the 19 Dodgers. Let me go through a few players with you here. And Lenny touched on this some this morning. I want to dig a little deeper if I can for just a few minutes. I'm going to go through some players, give you their numbers for the year. And just imagine, these are all on the same team, fantasy-wise, if you're ever going to stack, a Dodger stack is not a bad idea. Max Munsey, who for fantasy purposes is first base, third base, second base eligible. Wow. He's hitting 269 on the year with 32 runs scored, 11 home runs, 32 RBIs, and three stolen bases. Last night against the Mets, he went two for five with two runs scored, a home run, and an RBI. Munsey's on pace. For 30 home runs and 100 RBI season. How about MVP front running candidate Cody Bellinger? One for five last night. But he did hit that double in the ninth inning to drive in the tying run. He later came around to score the winning run. He's hitting 378. 50 runs scored. 20 home runs. 52 RBIs. Seven stolen bases. Wow. Wow. He has only struck out 31 times this season. And against left-handers, Cody Bellinger has a 338 batting average. You talk about off-season work paying off. I mean, is there anyone it's paid more off for than it has Cody Bellinger? Okay? What a season so far. Projected out, we're through a third of the season, 60 home runs, 150 RBIs, and 150 runs scored, and 20 stolen bases. Never know. Right now, that's the pace. Justin Turner, last night, 3 for 5 for the Dodgers. He went 5 for 5 on Sunday against Pittsburgh. He went 2 for 5 against the Mets on Monday. He's hitting 306 for the year now. 28 runs scored, 6 home runs, 25 RBIs. Started off slowly, but he's turned it on lately. Okay? And over those last five games, over his last four games, 20 at bats, he has 10 hits. That's easy math, right? 500 batting average as he comes to the game day against the Mets. Corey Seager, yet another player on the rise for the Dodgers. Now he's only hitting 239 in the year. If you look at his yearly numbers, wow, not the Mets. 35 runs scored, only 6 home runs. 27 RBIs, but if you look at his last five games, okay, where he's had 21 at bats and eight hits, that's a lot higher than his season average, folks. That's a 381 average over his last six, playing the Mets today, okay? 26 year old has a six game hitting streak. Look out for Corey Seager. And as we continue down the road of Murderer's Row, how about their leadoff hitter, Jock Peterson? Two for five last night against the Mets. Two runs scored, one home run, one RBI. He's 27. He's got a line on the year of 268 batting average, 36 runs scored, and from the leadoff spot, 16 home runs and 30 RBIs. And then another batter to consider in that same lineup, rookie Alex Verdugo. He went one for three last night with two RBIs. He tied the score at 2-2 with an RBI of Noah Syndergaard in the second. He walked it off against Edwin Diaz with a sacrifice fly to left field to cap a ninth running rally. He gave the Dod- helped give the Dodgers the 9-8 victory. Verdugo has done a great job so far this year. He's in 3-15. 17 runs, 4 home runs, 27 RBIs, 2 stolen bases. Look, guys, I just went through, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 players on the Dodgers who are tearing it up in fantasy. 
So if you're going to stack against Vargas, are you kidding me? Stack Dodgers. Go get them. It's time. It's time. I'm telling you. It's time to get them. Here's what we're going to do now for the next, uh, we've got 20 minutes left in the show. Boy, my tech segment times just work out perfectly today. I tell you what, we're just flowing. I want to talk about some players who've just recently been called up and their potential impact. Chappie, I was right on Seager. Yeah, I, you know, every now and then a, a blind hog finds an acorn, right? And so I was right on Seager. And maybe I'll be right on these next ones I'm going to talk about too. But I got... Just a few players, young players I want to talk about. I got four. You've heard about a few of them before. And no, I'm not talking about Jordan Alvarez this morning. Okay? Not anymore, anyway. I've already talked about my prediction on him coming up. So my four players, these are four players that are in the major leagues, young players, not necessarily all rookies, but young players with roles to fill. Okay? And uh, here we go. Let's just jump right in with one of my personal favorites and Phil Chappies, too, Kevin Cron. Kevin Cron last night, yeah, what a game last night for Kevin Cron. You know, Christian Walker, <coughs> excuse me, he has just, uh, well, would you say underperformed would be the right word here of late for Christian Walker? I'm not sure how you would call it. You could say he absolutely stinks here of late. You know, Christian Walker started out the season band of fire, really. I mean, he was red hot the first month of the season. He was uh, getting added in almost every league, okay? Well, last night he did pinch in and get a hit, but that ended a 0 for 12 skid, okay? He's hitting 243. He hasn't hit a home run in forever. And so they call up Christian Cron last Friday, and last night Christian Cron gets his second start. He did start on the 25th. At San Francisco, that was last Saturday, and in that game he went one for four, scored a run, had two RBIs, which, oh, by the way, is two more RBIs than Christian Walker's had in the last three weeks. That's true. Got his second start last night in Colorado. He went two for four with a pair of doubles and a run scored. Okay? Both hits came off right-hander Jeff Hoffman. At minor league ball this year, he was averaging 339 with an 800 OPS. He had 21 home runs and 62 RBIs at AAA Reno. Now, they called him up for a reason. And I got to think that the reason they called him up is because Christian Walker has been garbage here lately when it comes to playing baseball. Okay? Phil Chappie says, my first baseman on my softball team is better than Walker. Maybe so. I don't know who your first baseman is. If he's better than a professional baseball player, then you got a heck of a softball player there. But I will say this. Walker is not cutting it for the Diamondbacks. They're not scoring runs. I was watching a game on TV, and their announcers were saying how they were just not scoring runs. The Rockies, if they win today, will sweep four games from them at Coors Field. Kevin Cron last night did hit two doubles. Have you seen him? He's huge. He's, he's like a superhero in a uniform. Yeah. He's like 6'5", 250 or something. I mean, uh, he's massive. And he can hit a baseball. And I'm asking myself, what is Arizona doing? What are they waiting on? Now, I'm going to see today Freeland pitches for Colorado. I have a sneaky hunch Kron's back in that lineup today. And if you can get back-to-back games and he can get some key hits, then that could continue. And I look for Kevin Cron to be an impact going forward for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, I sure do. It's Kevin Cron. Now, another player we talk about opportunity, and the news out of Philadelphia earlier this week was sad. Okay? I get it. Sad news because Odebel Herrera was arrested on domestic violence allegation, and that's yet to be litigated. So we don't know his guilt or innocence yet. We'll hold off on that. But we do know this. We do know in the meantime that Adrubal Herrera has been placed on administrative leave. All right? And with Herrera on administrative leave, that opens up center field. And who filled it in last night? Scott Kingery. Okay? Scott Kingery last night against the Cardinals, two for five, two runs scored, one home run, and two RBIs. Kingery on the season now, hitting 344. 11 runs scored, 3 home runs, 9 RBIs, 2 stolen bases. 
He's shortstop eligible now. 